Today I'm going to show you how to create a beam of light coming out of the sky in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today I'm going to show you a really cool technique in which you can create a beam of light that's going to come out of the sky and hit your subject. Now these techniques are really cool for this application, but you can also use them for other applications. If you have someone in a photo and they're kind of shining a flashlight around, you can use it to create a beam of light out of a flashlight, headlights out of a car, window light coming through windows, all these cool different techniques. You can basically use these same principles and apply them in different images for different ways. So very, very cool stuff. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. All right, so this is our image. This is by Vincent Tulo, and he asked if we could create a beam of light, making it look like it's kind of like coming from the sky, maybe, uh, you know, kind of like uh, taking him prisoner as a uh, alien or whatever you have it. I, I, I don't know, but it's just a really cool image, and we're going to create a nice beam of light. So the first thing I want to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of this, uh, the light source that we have. It looks like this is a, um, just like a monolight, maybe like a Einstein or something like that with a seven inch reflector and uh, this little guy looks like a, a tab from a grid. So I'm guessing there's a grid on it and it's basically just shining right down on our, onto our subject. So the first thing I wanna do is clone stamp out our uh, light source. And this is something that you wind up doing quite a bit, especially if you're gonna be doing you know, this type of technique. Um, you'll have to clone stamp this sort of thing out. What I would recommend doing if, uh, if you don't want to do like clone stamping and things like that, what I recommend is instead of you know, just taking one exposure and then trying to clone stamp it out later, take a couple exposures. Um, take an image, you know, take an exposure without that light in that place at all. And then what you can do is just kind of use a layer mask and bring those two images together and combine them later in post. And that way you'll actually have you know, the real tree information from behind. You don't have to use a clone stamp. I just did a very quick job there. It's not, it's not supposed to look amazing. I'm not trying to blow your minds with my clone stamp or <laughs> just trying to get it to where that doesn't really show up. I'm not even going to take care of the bottom there. Okay, so we've got our light source and uh, it's pretty much gone. Now the next thing I want to do is kind of think about like where this actual beam of light is going to come from. So let's make a new layer here and I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool. This is what we're going to be doing for the majority of the tutorial. Now let's make this guy visible. We can just keep in mind it's right about there, okay? So with our polygonal lasso tool, we can see that our uh, kind of like the boundaries of this light ray is, you know, coming from here all the way to about there. So we want to make sure that the light actually does kind of fill this area. We wouldn't want to make a light ray that only hits this small area uh, because we can, all, we can see it on the ground. This is where, where the light is actually hitting. So let's go ahead and start out there. I'm just going to click with my polygonal lasso tool. Keep in mind our light source was about there, so we don't want the light source coming from too low or too high because that's just not realistic. It's coming from right about there. So we're just going to kind of create a source that looks something like that. You go right in this way. That's where our light source is. It's going to come around here towards the bottom and then kind of wrap around here. There we go. So this is kind of the outside of our light right now. This is like the uh, outer perimeter. And the biggest key that I can tell you guys, whenever you're doing this sort of thing, you want to keep two things in mind. One, you want to make sure you do this in multiple layers. You don't want to try to do it in just one layer because it's never going to look good. Light has like a really interesting way. It decays as it gets further from the light source as well as like, you know, there's a little bit more intensity towards the center. So you want to do a couple different layers that's just going to help you make something that's realistic. So that's the first principle. And the next principle is make sure it's like a little bit brighter towards the light source and not as light where it's actually hitting because it doesn't have to be like a huge difference, but you just want to be sure that it's just not the same equal throughout because light does get less intense as it travels further from the source. Okay, so here we are. This is like the outside of our light cone or whatever we'll, we want to call it. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer and what it's going to do is it's going to load that selection into my adjustment layer. So we're going to click here right in the middle and just kind of like bring this up right to about there. We'll get this pretty bright. There we go. We can always change these things later. So it's not really a big deal if you don't get this exactly correct. You can always change this later. Okay, so here we have like the outermost um, part of our, of our light source. And you can see it just doesn't look that real right now. But we need a big blur on this to make it look like it's kind of fading out. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and over here to Gaussian Blur. And we're going to choose like a really large blur right there. There we go. And we can see already we're looking a little bit more real. So this is kind of like the outermost part of our light. And Alt or Option click and we can see it does have a nice blur towards the outsides. 
The next thing I want to do, let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool again. This time I'm going to come inside quite a bit. And there we go, inside of the light ray that we already have. And this time we're going to create like a core. This is the core of our light ray where it's just a little bit brighter. So what we're going to do here is again, we have that selected. We're going to grab an adjustment layer and go to curves. It's going to load that selection into my layer mask and we're just going to bring that up a little bit as well. Okay, now this should have a blur on it as well, but a little bit less of a blur. So we're going to go to filter, blur here, Gaussian blur, and we're going to choose a slightly less blur. Still don't, you don't want to do something like this because like, just, you know, you'll never see that in real life, right? So you just want to make sure that you've got something that, you know, still does look on the more realistic side. There we go. So there's our second light blur. And you can do this a couple times. Let's just do it one more time. You know, here, like the very middle of our core. Why not? Just right there. And notice I'm going past our subject just a little bit. That's because you can see it on the ground. That's like the light is hitting the ground. So we want to make sure the light rays does come all the way down. It shouldn't stop at our subject here because it's, you know, you can see it on the ground. It's already, it's already there for you. All right. And here we're going to do the same thing. Grab a curves adjustment layer and click in the middle and drag that up just a little bit. There we are. And now let's give this a blur as well. So filter, blur, and over here to Gaussian blur. All right, and we can choose a blur that's just gonna make sense right here in the center. There we go. Now, we mentioned changing the intensities. This, this can happen anytime. I can just double click right here and I can make this either more intense or less intense, really whatever we wanna do. Um, you just wanna find something that looks relatively natural. So we can see, you know, with just one layer, um, kind of doesn't really have a lot of depth to it. Two layers and then three layers. Each of these is just adding a little bit more depth and each of them on their own doesn't really produce the full effect. You could make this layer just maybe a little bit less bright. There we go. Really whatever you want to do with these depending on your effect. But combining these together is just a really great, great way to make that have a little bit more depth. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, this is, sounds a little bit weird, but what Basically, what allows you to see light through the air like this is fog or like atmospheric, you know, particles. Basically, water particles in the air is what allows you to see the light. Like right now, you can't see light beams traveling in front of me because there's no fog in this air. So the only time you're actually going to see this is when it is a little bit foggy outside. So we're going to do something that's going to simulate fog. And technically, the street lamp up on the top, you should be able to see a fog glow around that as well. So maybe we can do that too. Um, this is not like the perfect way to do it, but it is just kind of like a, a cool and relatively fast way to do it. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to go to, here we go. Let's just create a adjustment layer. We'll go to curves adjustment layer and I'm going to bring this up. We're going to bring this up from here and that's just going to like give us a little bit more of that like foggy color. There we go. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to paint black. I'm going to hit command I on that and paint white, sorry, paint white on my layer mask something like that, just kind of like where we want this kind of fog to actually be. Cool, and now let's try to go to filter. We're gonna go down here to render and I'm gonna go down to clouds. There we go. Oh, you know what, I could have done that afterwards. So filter, render, clouds. If those clouds, I didn't need to paint in there because it just kind of covered my entire layer with clouds. These clouds, they're cool, but they're a little too small. You can see like there's like too much detail. So I'm going to hit Command T, we're going to lock these together, and I'm going to just grow that a little bit. There we go. And now what I want to do is just grab my brush tool and paint black um, with a relatively low flow, something about like 30 or 40%, just kind of away from the area where the light is not hitting. There we go. So just this little thing right there is going to help because what it does is basically makes it look like, okay, maybe it is like kind of a foggy night. That kind of does make sense. Let's do the same thing right around our uh, little light right here. So we're gonna create another curve adjustment layer. We'll make it a little bit brighter so we can see what we're doing. Okay, let's go to filter and down here to render and down here to clouds as well. Okay, and let's just bring that a little bit brighter so we can actually see what's going on there. Okay, now what we want to do, I'm gonna change the color of this as well. We're gonna change this, uh, I'm gonna pull the blues and kind of pull those down. And now I'm going to pull the reds and pull that up. And that's going to give us a little bit of like an orange color as well. And that's just going to help match what's going on here. So let's make sure to paint black around the areas that we don't want that to show up, which is pretty much everywhere except for our, um, our little street lamp up there. All right. And there we can see we got a little bit of like, you know, cloud and things like that going on next to our street lamp. Just kind of help sell the effect. And that's the same thing here. Um, the only reason this area is showing up a little bit 
weird is because we do have, you can see like it is a little bit um, like weird with the haze. What we want to do, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker instead of, um, I'm going to do it right underneath all these layers. We're going to make a new layer and I'm going to paint with black right over here on top of this. There we go. And this should help. And then I'm going to double click on this layer and I'm going to say this layer only be visible where the underlying layer is darker. So I'm going to hold alt or option, not be visible where the underlying layer is lighter. There we go. Just where it's darker. And that should kind of help me get rid of that a uh, little bit of haze that I had going on there. All right, let's just give that a bit of a blur. You probably won't have to do that. That's just because I did a, a pretty quick, relatively not great job with <laughs> my clone stamping. Okay, so the same thing like we added color here. Uh, we could do the same thing if we want to add color here on this light ray. All you have to do is just grab a curves adjustment layer. We can click here on our blue channel, just bring that down a little bit. We'll go to our red channel, bring that up a little bit. This is going to just kind of warm that up. And then we can just kind of paint this in here. Just use a large soft brush and paint that in. It's just going to warm our light ray up just a bit. Kind of help make everything look a little bit more um, light ray-ish. There we go. Very nice. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get this um, for the light uh, for the light up top out of there. We're going to group all these layers. So I'm going to shift click them all and hit command G. Sorry, except for the one with the uh, street lamp. So this is basically my entire light ray. Now what I want to do is just give it a slight little bit of a gradient to make it look like it's more visible up at the top and less visible up, the, up down at the bottom. So I'm going to duplicate this. To, so now we have like a lot of light. We're going to put a layer mask on there. I'm going to hit command I on that layer mask. And now we're going to grab our gradient tool, G for the gradient tool. We're going to click on our foreground transparent gradient and I'm going to choose white as my foreground color and I'm going to click right up here and kind of drag down there and that's just going to make it look it's going to change my layer mask so it's more visible up at the top so we have a visible down to not visible and that's on the duplicate which is just showing like okay maybe it's brighter up there and if we want it to be not as dark bright down here we put a layer mask on that same gradient just switch your color to black by hitting X and we'll go from the bottom left up there and that's just going to make this Scott sorry that's going to make this not as visible. Shift click there, not as visible on the bottom. All right, maybe we'll come down in opacity with that just a little bit. All right, so basically that's how we create our light blue. Realistically, we'd have this in there, but I'm just going to make this invisible so it doesn't kind of get in the way. But there's a couple of things we wanted to keep in mind here. First, do it in a couple of different layers. This like clouds really does help out make that effect a, quite a bit more real. And if you do need to add color, make sure you do that there at the end because it's going to color everything that's underneath it. So pretty cool. We have our before. Let's just look at our before with no light ray and our after. Now you guys can get busy creating amazing light rays. Let's go ahead and group those. There's one last thing I want to do. I want to click on this and I'm going to go to filter. We're going to go to uh, render and I'm going to go to, sorry, I hit difference clouds, but I wanted to hit regular clouds. Let's hit filter, render, and we're going to go to clouds again. There we go. And now it's loaded the clouds here on this layer mask. And what we want to do, I'm just going to paint white on here, right here in the middle. And this is just going to give the entire light beam a little bit of texture. There we go. So it doesn't look as perfect. So let's just hit shift click on that so we can see the before and after. Just gives the entire thing a little bit of texture. You don't have to do that. I'm just getting fancy here. But that's it, guys. How we create a cool light beam coming from the sky in Photoshop. I hope you enjoy this. You can use this on any one of your images. As long as you have a light source, make sure it kind of looks like it's foggy outside and you are good to go. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Sayonara. See you later. Ciao. Arrivederci.